The Ancient Plug In 1998, an electrical engineer named John J. Williams uncovered the most controversial artifact in human history. John was on a hiking trip somewhere in North America, it's not clear where. He never gave up the location of where he found this mysterious object. Some say he didn't want to tell anyone because he knew the object wasn't real. Whatever the case, the location remains a mystery to this day. What John did say is that he found the object far from civilization. It wasn't near any towns or mines, it was essentially in the middle of nowhere. I won't torture you anymore. Here's what he found. He came across a triple-pronged electric plug embedded in a rock. The plug is exactly what you're picturing. It's the same kind of plug attached to the cord behind your TV and stuck in the wall outlet. Only the prongs are a little different from what you see on modern plugins. They are all smooth and cylindrical in shape. What makes the artifact so controversial is that the rock in which the plug is embedded is 100,000 years old. It's a baffling mystery because there is no debate that the object is obviously a plug and obviously embedded in stone. Nobody has ever been able to explain how the plug got there. Could it be a mistake of nature? Could it be evidence of an advanced civilization on this planet 100,000 years ago? Did someone figure out time travel? Or did John somehow manufacture the artifact himself? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. The King of Kish The ancient civilization of Sumer was truly the first great civilization of this world. They created the first writing system, excelled in technology, and built the first cities. They also had the first powerful rulers. One of those rulers was Enmebaragesi. But was he a man or a god? According to the earliest records from ancient Sumer, Enmebaragesi ruled the city-state of Kish. His name comes up as one of the first known rulers in human history. He was alive at least 5,300 years ago. The city-state of Kish was in modern-day Iraq. Kish is one of the cities mentioned multiple times in the legendary Sumerian king list. Things are going to get a little complicated, so stay with me here. The Sumerian king list is an ancient text that lists the name of every early Sumerian king. It's a baffling document because many of the names on the list are the names of gods. Some real kings are also noted as ruling for hundreds of years at a time, like King Alangar of Eridu who ruled for 36,000 years. The king list might be interpreted as a mythical document if not for the fact the names of gods are written alongside the names of real human kings who definitely existed. Enmibaragesi is one of the names on that list. The list, which is etched on an ancient clay tablet, claims that he ruled for 900 years. He couldn't have been a real human, right? Human beings don't live for 900 years. Imagine how bad your dementia would be after two centuries. But what if he was real? His name doesn't only exist on the king list. There are other unexplainable artifacts with his name on them. For example, an alabaster vase fragment that lists Enmebaragesi as the king of Kish, kept at the Iraq National Museum. Scholars and historians believe that Enmebaragesi was a real person, and most likely a king. But they don't believe he ruled for 900 years. There is no logical explanation to explain why the Sumerians said he ruled for nine centuries if he didn't. What's your take on the mystery? Could humans have really once lived for hundreds of years like it says in the Bible? Let me know what you think in the comments. The Meister Print In 1968, amateur paleontologist William J. Meister was looking for trilobite fossils. It seems like a pretty fun thing to do if I'm being totally honest. William was at the Cambrian Wheeler Formation in Utah, not far from Antelope Springs, sifting through strata 500 million years old in his search for fossils. On the ground before him was the fossil of a trilobite, but the trilobite was inside what appeared to be a fossilized human shoe print. It looked like somebody stepped on the trilobite wearing a modern shoe 500 million years ago. Impossible, right? That's of course what scientists will tell you. 
But is it any more impossible than a king who ruled for 900 years, or a plug embedded in a 100,000-year-old rock? The discovery became international news. People started using it as a scientific argument against evolution. Creationists positively loved the story because it suggested humans lived alongside trilobites, and by extension, dinosaurs. The mysterious print was quickly dismissed by the scientific community. Experts determined the shape of the print was nothing but a geological process. It just so happened to look like the print of a person's shoe. The curious footprint is disregarded as what you might call a giant nothing burger these days. But who knows? Maybe it was left by a time traveler? The Dogu Figurines The Jomon period is the Japanese Stone Age, the earliest period in Japanese history that scientists know about. It began prior to the end of the Ice Age, around 16,000 years ago. However, human beings as a species were likely on the island of Japan long before then. Either way, it was 16,000 years ago that the Jomon started crafting highly unusual artifacts. Artifacts which many believe point to contact between the Jomon and extraterrestrials. It's believed the Jomon culture spanned all of Japan, as evidenced by their pottery and figurines found across the Japanese islands. They were very skilled in creating pottery. It's the one big thing they are known for today but they also created figurines known as dogu. Most often, they were buried in graves with people, or they were buried underneath stone circles. Researchers think they had something to do with rituals, or it was a spiritual practice. Some of the dogu figures appear to represent non-human creatures. Some of the more recent dogu figurines from 3,000 years ago were made with gigantic eyes and caricatured bodies. Scholars have described them as looking like spacemen because of their exaggerated features. One theory is that they were modeled after large-eyed space entities that visited Japan in prehistoric times. But not all the figurines look like aliens. Some of them appear to be fertility idols. These dogu are small and shapely. They look uncannily similar to fertility figures found in Western cultures from as long as 25,000 years ago. The Tijipeta Rock In 2012, Tracy Williams was taking a beachside stroll in Cornwall, England, when she came across a block. It was a weird, rubbery block with the word Jipeter printed on it in big black letters. She didn't think much of it until she found another one on a different beach a few weeks later. That caught her interest. It turned out these unusual rubber blocks were washing up everywhere. They kept showing up on beaches, but nobody knew where they were from. It was a baffling mystery that gripped Denmark, Spain, France, and all of the British Isles. People wondered if the rubber blocks were coming from a shipwreck. Eventually, Tracy's obsession led her to a small village in Indonesia. The village is called Jepeter, which is exactly what was written on the rubber blocks. In the 19th century, Jepeter was home to a large rubber plantation. It was hugely important for creating insulation used while laying underwater telegraph cables. Now, Tracy knew where the blocks came from, but she didn't know why they were washing up on European beaches. It's a mystery that still hasn't fully been solved. According to oceanographer Curtis Ebsmeyer, it takes around 25 years for flotsam, which is what they're called, to go around the world. For all Tracy knows, the Jepeter blocks could have already gone around the world two or three times. One theory is that the blocks came from the Titanic. On the Titanic's cargo manifest, rubber tablets are listed. If it's ever confirmed that these things came from that legendary vessel, they could suddenly be worth tens of thousands of dollars. Another theory is that the rubber blocks came from the Miyazaki Maru. In 1917, the Japanese passenger ship was on its way to London when it got hit by a German sub and sank. At the time, the ship was carrying thousands of these blocks. The Malachite Man In the mid-1990s, a dozer operator in Utah scooped up a bunch of dirt and was shocked to see human bones. It was a highly unusual discovery because the human bones were partially fossilized, embedded with malachite and turquoise minerals. There were 10 sets of human bones in total, and they sent the archaeological community into chaos. 
Although there were 10 skeletons discovered, the find became known only as the Malachite Man. The bones were controversial from the very start because of their depth, about 100 feet deep in solid sandstone. They were found within rock from 150 million years ago. The mainstream scientific theory was that the skeletons were from Native Americans who perished in a mining accident. To some, the mining accident theory doesn't make as much sense as one would want it to. One of the biggest reasons to dismiss the skeletons having anything to do with the mining is that several of the bones belong to children, small children who would not have been working in a mine. Sure, kids have historically worked in mines, but these were little children, hardly capable of picking up an axe or digging in the dirt. Second of all, there were no tunnels discovered. If this was a mining accident, the skeleton should have been found within the ruins of mining tunnels. But that wasn't the case. And then, none of the bones were crushed. Let's say the kids were mining and there was a cave-in. They should have been crushed by falling debris. To this day, the truth of the bones remains an enormous mystery. There is no logical explanation for how these people were buried 100 feet in hard sandstone. They've never been properly dated, so it's unclear how old they really are. Some believe they lived alongside dinosaurs 150 million years ago. The Lady of Elche The Lady of Elche is a fantastic artifact currently held at the National Archaeology Museum of Madrid. The statue is of a woman with an eerily haunting gaze. She has a proud expression on her face, full lips, a button nose, and seriously piercing eyes. There is no doubt that this woman, whoever she may have been, was in a position of authority. But the truth of who she was is unknown. Her inscrutable gaze has been puzzling archaeologists since she was found in Valencia in 1897. Some think she's a witch. Others have called her an extraterrestrial visitor. The mainstream theory is that the Lady of Elche is a portrayal of the goddess Tanit from Carthaginian mythology. Her statue may have even been used as a funerary urn 2,500 years ago. For years, experts were so stunned by the statue that they thought it was fake. It wasn't until 2011 that scientists used electron microscopy scans to confirm the statue is a legitimate ancient relic. Scans found traces of human ashes and bone inside a small opening at the back of the sculpture. And that's where the urn idea came from. Knowing the Lady of Elche is real, and ancient for that matter, hasn't helped uncover her true identity. Some believe she came from Atlantis. The unusual disc-shaped ornaments on the side of her head are unique to the Iberian culture of ancient Spain. She may have been a legendary ruler, her name lost to history. The Marchenbar Island Coins Australia's Northern Territory is a brutal and inhospitable place. It's hot, there's almost no civilization, and it's wild. It isn't the kind of place ancient civilizations thrived, especially not a civilization from Africa. Yet the craziest artifacts ever discovered in Australia were found in the Northern Territory. A group of coins from Tanzania, Africa were discovered here. The discovery was made during World War II by a serviceman with the Royal Australian Air Force named Maury Eisenberg. He was walking along the beach when he came across coins from 900 years ago that originated in a medieval African empire. Other than this singular discovery, only two other coins from medieval Tanzania have been found outside the country. There was one discovery in Zimbabwe, which makes sense, and there was another discovery in Oman, which also makes sense. Finding the coins in Australia, over 10,000 miles away, doesn't make as much sense. Archaeologists have nothing but speculation to go on. One theory is that the Yongnu Aboriginal people of Australia were trading with African merchants 1,000 years ago. Another theory is that an African merchant vessel crashed off the coast of Australia. Then, some of their coins washed ashore. Some even think a group of Africans tried to settle in Australia only to be consumed by the horrors of the Northern Territory. The Koso Artifact No out-of-place artifact is more famous than the Koso Artifact, a bizarre object that proves that humans will never agree on anything. In February of 1961, Wallace, Virginia, and Mike were out searching for geodes near Olancha, California. They collected a bucket full of rocks and took them home. 
One of the geodes proved to be a lot more interesting than the rest, containing a shaft of bright metal. The geode enthusiasts soon learned they had an ancient artifact embedded in a mineral nodule 500,000 years old. Rumors started to spread that history was changing. It was believed the metallic object embedded in the geode was a piece of unknown technology. Since Homo sapiens weren't around 500,000 years ago, people started assuming the Koso artifact came from aliens or from a civilization that existed before the rise of humans. Maybe a lizard civilization, or maybe hyper-intelligent koalas, nobody can say for certain. But the fun only lasted for so long. Soon it was determined that the ancient artifact was a spark plug with its metal components rusted away. It wasn't a geode at all, just a piece of trash from the 1920s. Spark plug collectors all identified the artifact as an early spark plug, Scientists moved on from the discovery. There wasn't anything mysterious about it since the spark plug wasn't even embedded in a rock. It was just so rusted, it looked like a rock. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. The Petroglyphs of the Enchanted Valley. In the South American country of Chile, there is a place called Valle del Encanto, or the Enchanted Valley. It's a strange place, one filled with ancient petroglyphs prehistoric fossils, and signs of curious and wonderful things. The valley is little more than a ravine cutting across the desert, containing shrubs, rocks, and dirt. It was once a walking trail for the Chilean indigenous people as they moved from the huge and sprawling Andes Mountains to the coast. Today, it's most popular with hikers and tourists. It's also a great place to visit if you'd like to see some weird alien rock art that nobody seems able to explain. Scattered across rocks in the Enchanted Valley are unique examples of pre-Columbian rock art. Somebody, thousands of years ago, drew alien heads with antennae on the stones. Scientists don't know what these beings represent. They almost look like drawings of humans, except that they have antennas sticking out like some kind of highly advanced robot. And if that's not strange enough, there are the indents in the stones. Some of the rocks not only feature weird drawings of potentially extraterrestrial beings, but they also have random holes. Each deep hole punched into the rock is about the size of a fist, and nobody's ever been able to confirm why or how the natives created them. Some say they were used for grinding corn, others have guessed for ceremonies, but it's not clear. The Tamil Bell in 1836, a missionary named William Colenso discovered a broken bronze bell that was at the time being used as a pot for boiling potatoes. He found the mysterious artifact, what would come to be known as the Tamil Bell, near Wangaray in the northern region of New Zealand, being used by a Maori woman for cooking. What made the bell so strange and mysterious was that William identified an inscription running around its rim. The inscription was written in ancient Tamil and translates to Mohoyedan Books Ship's Bell. The script seems to suggest that the bell was already 500 years old when it was found, possibly from the Pandya dynasty of South India. This was a huge deal when it was discovered, because as far as Europeans were concerned, Australia and Polynesia, and indeed New Zealand, were all fairly new discoveries. The presence of a ship's bell from South India implies that seafarers from India discovered the lands of Oceania much earlier than Europeans. This posed yet another mystery. If the bell was really left behind by an Indian ship 500 years earlier in the 12th or 13th century, why is there no mention of it anywhere? Tamil seafarers never wrote of any expeditions to unknown lands far to the south. It could have been a one-way trip. This ship may have reached New Zealand only to be stranded and the people killed. Others have speculated that the bell, although ancient, was not left in New Zealand 500 years ago. Instead, it may have been dropped by a more recent Portuguese vessel. Or it could have washed up on shore as debris from an ancient shipwreck. Golden Airplanes The Kimbaya artifacts look like golden airplanes. These ancient artifacts were found in Colombia and were crafted by the indigenous Kimbaya people at least 500 years ago. 
There isn't much known about the Kimbaya civilization other than that they lived on the western slopes of the Andes Mountains, starting roughly in the 1st century BC. They were hunters, but slowly evolved to plant crops, then branched into mining and goldsmithing. The civilization reached its peak starting in the 4th century AD, then continued to prosper until the Spanish arrived in the 16th century. The Spanish were quick to put an end to 1500 years of culture and tradition. The Kimbaya were known for one thing specifically, their mastery of goldwork. They made spectacular jewelry, amazing statues, and other works of art out of gold and copper. The strange Kimbaya artifacts were looted in the 1800s from the central Cauca Valley, but archaeologists aren't sure from exactly where. They most likely came from two lost tombs pillaged by tomb raiders, but nobody knows for sure. To many, some of the gold artifacts look like airplanes. There are 123 tiny gold objects, each no larger than 3 inches, and each one totally unique. Some researchers say they were only meant to be depictions of lizards and butterflies and other flying creatures from the jungle, but some also look like modern flying machines. Some would argue the artifacts look more like flying machines than they do insects. There is no way the Kimbaya would have ever seen an airplane, unless they had somehow witnessed a glimpse into the future or had extraterrestrial visitors cruising through the atmosphere. For this reason, the artifacts will remain a mystery. The Newark Holy Stones David Weirich allegedly discovered a set of artifacts in 1860 called the Newark Holy Stones. He found these stones within a cluster of ancient burial mounds in Ohio. And although the stones are highly controversial, and some don't believe they hold any historical value, they can still be found at the Humrich House Museum in Koshokton. The site where they were found definitely holds historical value, as it's one of the most important Native American Hopewell sites, occupied from between roughly 100 BC and 500 AD. The first of the stones is called the Keystone, and it was found inscribed with ancient Hebrew. The second stone is the Decalogue, a strange tablet that has the Ten Commandments from Exodus, also written in ancient Hebrew, and it also has the figure of Moses carved into it. The stones were taken for radiocarbon dating in 2014. Bradley Lepper from the Ohio History Connection dated one of the fragments as being from 85 AD or just shy of 2,000 years old. That would fit nicely with the time that the Hopewell culture had been living where the artifacts were found. It would also help to confirm the Lost Tribes theory. The theory suggests an ancient tribe of Israelites crossed the sea and established a colony in Ohio thousands of years ago. On the flip side, experts have argued that David faked the artifacts because he was a steadfast supporter of the Lost Tribe theory. He wanted to make the theory a reality, and so he crafted the stones himself using materials that he stole from real archaeological sites. Texas Man Tracks The Paluxy River in Texas is a fantastic site known primarily for its dinosaur footprints. There are dinosaur tracks all over the riverbed left over from the Cretaceous period. One of the most famous is a sequence of tracks known as the Chase. The tracks show a group of sauropods being chased by a hungry Acrocanthosaurus, a massive carnivore that lived in Texas 113 million years ago. The carnivore was just as dangerous and terrifying as the T-Rex. But the most controversial discovery to ever come out of the Paluxy River was made in the early 1930s. Locals came across dinosaur footprints right beside human footprints making it seem as if some species of human was walking alongside dinosaurs in prehistoric times. The prints became known as the Man Tracks and were popularized in 1939 by conspiracy theorists. These conspiracy groups claimed giant human beings lived at the same time as dinosaurs. Many of the tracks have already been proven fake. It turned out some locals had gotten together during the Great Depression and carved the tracks themselves. They were just trying to make money and bring more commerce to the area. But other tracks have proven to be legitimate. These other man tracks are real fossilized tracks, only too distorted or eroded to tell for sure if they were made by giant people 
or bipedal dinosaurs. The Dorchester Pot The Dorchester Pot was found in Dorchester, Massachusetts in 1852. The mystery behind the strange artifact is that it's supposedly 593 million years old. It was found broken into two pieces following an explosion used to break up rock near Meeting House Hill. A story in the Boston Transcript from June 5, 1852 describes the discovery of the artifact in great detail. The two pieces of the pot were found loose in the debris of the blast. It was inferred at the time that because of the location of the fragments, they had been stuck in solid stone. The pot fragments would have been buried under 10 feet of solid rock. The rock in which they were supposedly sealed accumulated between 570 and 593 million years ago at the bottom of what was once an ocean. It makes absolutely no sense that a small bell-shaped pot like a vase was stuck in such ancient rock. Some claim the pot is proof of creationism, while others say it's nothing but a Victorian-era candlestick. In all likelihood, it's possible that the candlestick got mixed up in the explosion somehow and perhaps wasn't physically stuck inside the rock at all. Still, it's an ongoing mystery that's never been fully confirmed as half a billion years old or not. Roman Mexico in 1933, archaeologist José García Payón was excavating an ancient site in the Toluca Valley of Mexico. The site is about 40 miles from Mexico City, once the seat of a powerful Mesoamerican society. The major city of Calixtlahuaca, nothing more than a ruin today, was an urban settlement ruled by nomadic natives as far back as 640 BC. But over the next 2,000 years, the original inhabitants lost their influence. The city was taken over by the Mexica and later the Aztec. And by 1510, the whole place had been burned to the ground. It was during excavations of this city when José Bayón discovered the terracotta head of something that looked strangely Roman. The head was part of a larger figure but was found detached from its body in a grave buried under three floors of a pyramid. The head was accompanied with other valuable objects like jewelry made from copper and rock crystal. Whoever had been buried beneath the pyramid died around the year 1476. Where in the world the head came from is anybody's guess. The truly bizarre thing is just how much the terracotta head looks like a Roman artifact. It looks like it was pulled from the tomb of a Roman emperor and not from the grave of an unknown Aztec. An assessment done by Romeo H. Christoph from the University of New Mexico in 2001 said the hypothesis of Roman origin is applicable. Romeo went on in his report to claim the head could have come from the 2nd century AD. Judging by the shape of the beard and the style of hair, the head could have been one of the Severian emperors from between 193 and 235 AD. Still, that doesn't answer the question of how the head traveled across the world and made it into an Aztec grave in the middle of a Mexican valley. It's left researchers scratching their heads for decades, and no one has any tangible theories. Walking with Trilobites in June 1968, William J. Meister was on an expedition 43 miles from Delta, Utah. He was with his wife and daughter, and their friends and two of their daughters. They were doing some amateur archaeology, looking for things like fossils and prehistoric ruins. They had already discovered a few trilobite fossils when suddenly William busted open a slab of rock and found a footprint. The rock cracked open like a book, revealing a set of obviously human tracks with the fossil of a trilobite in the middle. A trilobite is an extinct marine arthropod from the Paleozoic era. It was almost a perfect mold of someone wearing a sandal. What it looked like is that somebody had stepped on the trilobite, crushing it against their sandal and preserving it as an imprint. The strata in which these fossils were found is 500 million years old. That would suggest whoever walked here did so 500 million years before today. Nobody has ever been able to prove this, nor to really explain the artifacts. In 1970, the footprint was used by Melvin A. Cook, a famous American chemist, as evidence against evolution. Most scientists have dismissed the track as nothing but nonsense. 
The trilobite fossil is certainly real, but the human print has mostly been dismissed as just a freak coincidence. The Dropa Stones The Dropa Stones are a collection of 716 circular stone discs which allegedly date back 12,000 years. What makes them truly remarkable, besides being incredibly old, is that they have tiny markings on them that look like hieroglyphics. Each disc is about one foot in diameter, and each one has a pair of grooves. These grooves form spirals from the center of the disc to its outer edge. Nobody has any idea what the spirals could possibly mean, or what the Dropa stones even are. The mysterious discovery took place in 1938 on the border of China and Tibet. A Chinese professor named Qi Pu Te came across a series of graves. The graves were bizarre because the skeletons only measured a maximum of about four feet tall and had peculiarly shaped heads. Nearby, the archaeologists found a cave system with strange rock art showing figures with unnaturally shaped heads. The rock was also engraved with representations of the sun, moon, and stars. Deeper inside the cave, the Dropa stones were found like a bunch of discarded pieces of machinery. These days, the Dropa stones are mostly considered a hoax. Nothing about them has ever made it into official scientific records, meaning nothing about them has ever been explained. The prevailing yet highly controversial theory is that these stones tell the story of a group of people who crashed their spaceship and met the Dropa indigenous group. Then they lived with them up until they died. The strange men from space were incredibly short, and they were buried in the cave along with scraps of their crashed ship. The Dogu Figures The Dogu figurines appear to be depictions of ancient astronauts, mysterious beings that came down from the sky thousands of years ago. The Dogu figurines are a collection of small statues that were made during the final years of the Japanese Jomon period, which lasted from between 14,000 to 400 BC. The strange figurines have unnatural characteristics that make them look as though they're wearing some kind of spacesuit. The body is bulky, just like a modern astronaut in their spacesuit. They also appear to have helmets on kind of like the old diving helmets with the big circular window in the middle. The only difference is that there are two windows, looking like massive eyeballs that are far too large for the head itself. If they are supposed to be eyes, they are disproportionate in relation to the body. Some have interpreted the Dogu figures as representations of ancient gods. Experts at the Metropolitan Museum of Art suggest the bulky bodies of the statues represent pregnancy, and that the figures were associated with fertility and ancient rituals. But if this were true, it's strange that the Dogu figurines stopped being produced 2,400 years ago. When Japan moved into the next historical period, the Yeyoi period, the Dogu figurines vanished. The Egg Cliff In a small rural Chinese village, there is a cliff that lays eggs. Not a man named Cliff who lays eggs, but an actual rock face that manages to produce enormous round rocks that look an awful lot like dinosaur eggs. Some of them are supposedly as heavy as 600 pounds. According to the locals, it takes about three decades for one of these stone eggs to be pushed out of the cliff and fall down on the ground as an almost perfectly egg-shaped stone treasure. It's a phenomenon which scientists have not yet been able to figure out. It's one of the weirdest mysteries on Earth and experts are stumped. This mysterious cliff is located in the Gizu province near Gulujai village. This happens to be the ancestral homeland of the Shui people, who have occupied the area for over 1,000 years. The part of the rock face which lays eggs is about 66 feet long, and a seemingly random part of an unnamed mountain. These stone eggs grow extremely slowly on the cliff face, getting more and more pronounced as time goes on. You can see them right now pushing out of the rock, but nobody knows when exactly one will detach itself and fall to the ground. When one of them does fall down, whichever villager is lucky enough to find it will take it home and worship it. As far as we know, there are about 100 of these stone eggs in the village, kept as sacred objects by the families. The Tring Tiles Hiding in a special cabinet inside the medieval galleries at the British Museum is a set of very mysterious ceramic tiles. These tiles are very unique, 
discovered years ago in the Victorian era when restoration was being done to the Tring Parish Church. Their importance was immediately recognized, and they were taken away by someone unknown, stashed somewhere safe, and passed down through generations until they eventually found their way to the museum. The tiles come from the 14th century, masterfully created using a technique known as graffito. There is only three of these very special tiles. No others have been found in Britain made using the same technique. Some have been found in France, but absolutely none on the British Isles. Nobody knows why they were used at the Tring Parish Church. Even more mysterious is what's on the tiles. Each one depicts scenes from the childhood of Jesus Christ, but the scenes are a bit strange. Actually, strange hardly describes just how bizarre the scenes are. One scene is of a group of children being stuffed into an oven, seemingly by Jesus himself. Another shows him blessing a family feast, and the other shows him performing miracles. The miracles are pretty standard, but Jesus putting kids in an oven is definitely a little off the books. To this day, no one knows why the tiles ended up in the church, or who created the curious pictures. The Kumakivi Balancing Rock In Finnish legend, the Kumakivi Balancing Rock was created by giants. And while that may seem completely unrealistic, science hasn't really come up with a better explanation. The bizarre Kumakivi Rock, which translates to English as strange rock, can be found in the middle of the forest in Finland. It is a massive boulder, an enormous stone that could crush your house, and it's balancing perfectly on another, much smaller stone. It's so strange that ever since ancient people discovered it, they made up fantastical stories on how the stone got there. The ancient people figured the only thing that made sense was giants. However, scientists say it was glaciers. The only explanation modern researchers can come up with is that as the glaciers, which once covered pretty much all of Finland, retreated 8,000 years ago, they carried giant rocks and pieces of debris with them. And as the glacier, which carried this particular giant rock, slowly dissipated, it dumped the rock in the precarious position we find it in now. It was a total fluke that the gigantic boulder ended up balanced on the smaller rock, and a miracle that it hasn't yet tipped over. And while there is no way to scientifically prove beyond any doubt that it was glaciers, it still makes a bit more sense than giants performing a balancing act with stones thousands of years ago. What do you think? The Zone of Silence The Zone of Silence doesn't contain any strange artifacts, but it's certainly one of the most bizarre and mysterious places in the world. It's an infamously magical place in Durango, Mexico. Radio and television signals allegedly get scrambled when brought over the invisible line into the zone of silence. Locals say compasses don't function properly, and some people have allegedly been seen vanishing like ghosts into thin air. This place has been called the Bermuda Triangle of Mexico, and nobody can quite figure out why so many peculiar things happen here. Even stranger is that in 1970, the U.S. accidentally dropped an Athena rocket in the area. It sank in the dirt, and American soldiers had to go dig it out. According to the experts, though, this isn't what makes the zone unusual. The disruption in technology, the disappearances, it's all being blamed on three main things. First, subterranean deposits of magnetite. Second, the debris from meteorites which impact this part of the desert with abnormal frequency. And third, celestial activity particularly visits from extraterrestrials. Which one makes the most sense to you? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. The Maya Volcano City A team of archaeologists recently explored a lost Maya city that collapsed inside of a volcano crater. Like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, a literal city was found inside the mouth of a volcano. Of course, the volcano hasn't been active for a very long time. It's actually flooded 5,000 feet above sea level in the highlands of Guatemala. The city was built around 400 BC and was once a thriving Maya metropolis. There were hundreds of houses, grand temples dedicated to powerful Maya gods, and everything else you would expect in an ancient Maya city. These days, though, it's submerged in the volcanic Lake Atitlan. The city is beneath about 65 feet of water. And according to Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology, it was a catastrophic event which led the city to collapse and the local people to flee. 
The only issue is that nobody is really sure what this event was. All we know is that something major happened and the mouth of the volcano flooded. To make things even more mysterious, this is the third lost city found inside the flooded volcano. There is also Samabaj and Chutnamit, both of which suffered the same mysterious fate roughly 1,800 years ago. The Anti-Gravity Stone Pillar The Anti-Gravity Stone Pillar in the Indian state of Karnataka is a marvel of engineering. This state has the second largest number of historical monuments covered in Hindu temples, amazing pieces of 12th century Hindu architecture, and thousands of sculptures and carved ornate pillars. But the anti-gravity pillar is absolutely unique. Located in the Vijayana Rayana Temple of Belur, commissioned by a king around 1117 AD, it took 103 years to complete the temple, which is dedicated to the Hindu god Vishnu. Here's why the pillar is considered one of the great architectural mysteries of India. It stands 42 feet tall and is a monolithic pillar carved of soapstone with no base or any kind of foundation. It's standing on a platform carved out of granite in the shape of a star, with nothing to make it stand firmly. It has no support, it's not fixed to the platform with any kind of mortar, and it's only standing on three sides. There is a giant gap underneath it and the granite star. Yet miraculously, it shows no sign of falling over. It's been there for nearly 1,000 years, defying gravity. To put this in perspective, it's like if you stood a pencil almost 50 feet tall on its eraser end, left it standing, and it never fell down. The White Pyramid The White Pyramid of Xi'an in China truly is the stuff of legends. In the 1940s, a group of U.S. service members reported seeing a pure white pyramid standing roughly 1,000 feet tall. If true, that would make this the tallest pyramid in the world. The issue these days is that nobody else has ever seen it. And to be completely honest, the story is a little out there. In 1945, a United States Army Air Corps pilot named James Gossman saw a huge pure white pyramid capped with a jewel as he flew over Xi'an. Two years later, Colonel Maurice Sheehan told the New York Times the exact same thing. They even ran an article in 1947. Here's the thing. In the region around Xi'an, there are about 400 pyramids. These aren't like the ancient pyramids of Egypt. They are more like giant mounds of grass and dirt. These monuments were made of soil, sticks, and rocks. And now they've decayed quite a bit. But because of the sheer number of overgrown pyramids in the region, it's not a far stretch to think there could be a giant white one. The big mystery now is that if these U.S. service members really did see it, where in the world did it go? King John's Lost Treasure A metal detectorist in England believes he has just discovered an ancient lost treasure on a farm in an old English village. His name is Raymond Koschuk, and he came across a small collection of medieval artifacts from 800 years ago. He didn't reveal the exact location of the site for fear of having his treasure taken away from him by other people with metal detectors. However, he does say the property once belonged to King John of England, and that the treasures he found are only a small fraction of the large hoard buried somewhere beneath the dirt. The legend of the treasure goes back to the year 1216. King John, who signed the Magna Carta just a year before his death, was crossing what back then was called the Wash. This was an estuary dividing the areas of Lincolnshire and Norfolk. Legend has it that as the king was crossing the Wash, he lost a great and valuable treasure. Before he could go back and get it, he died of dysentery because he drank poisoned ale. The treasure has been missing ever since. Some historians say it's just a legend, but John believes it's real. All he's found so far are some random artifacts, things like nails and metal buckles. But he's sure that somewhere down there is a whole heap of gold, sapphires, emeralds, and big juicy rubies. Mystery Altar in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre The Church of the Holy Sepulchre is by far the holiest place in all of the Holy Land. The church was supposedly built upon the very site where Jesus Christ was crucified, buried, and later resurrected. This itself makes it one of the most mystical and mysterious places especially religiously speaking, on our planet. But in recent days, a much more tangible mystery has been unveiled. Against a wall in the very back of the church 
archaeologists rediscovered a stone slab, which was once used as an altar in the medieval days. This slab, which had been pushed against the back wall and completely forgotten about for centuries, was once a piece of a medieval high altar used inside the sanctuary during the main liturgy of the church. The altar was almost certainly part of the main structure sometime around 1149, and was used by the Catholic clergy for celebrating Mass during the days of the Crusaders. In fact, it was used all the way up until the Crusaders abandoned Jerusalem. Afterward, the altar was used by the Greek Orthodox priests, up until 1808. That was when a fire swept through the church, damaged the altar, and it was thrown in the back. It then sat there completely forgotten for over 200 years. The Royston Cave The Royston Cave is located beneath the streets of the town of Royston in Hertfordshire, England. It's one of the most mysterious caves in not only England, but the entire world. What we know is that the cave is definitely man-made. It was constructed in the shape of a bell, a sunken chamber carved into the bedrock underneath the junction of a prehistoric Roman trackway called the Icknield Way and the ancient Roman road called Ermine Street, which once connected the city of London to York. The cave itself measures roughly 24 feet in height and about 15 feet in diameter. There was once an octagonal podium inside and a wooden frame that divided the cavern into two levels and supported a raised wooden platform. However, these artifacts have since decayed, and we don't really know what they were used for. Now comes the good part. The cave is decorated in some of the most chaotic cave carvings that have ever been found anywhere. The walls are decorated in weird carvings that appear to have major religious significance. We see images of the crucifixion, carvings of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Israel, along with images of the Holy Family, St. Catherine and St. Lawrence, and other important figures from the 13th century. There are also carvings of Jesus Christ, his disciples, and heaps of saints and martyrs. The mystery is that nobody knows what the Royston Cave was used for or who built it. One of the prevailing theories is that the dark underground cavern was used as a secret meeting place for important members of the Knights Templar. History tells us they had a stronghold in the nearby town of Balduk, and so it makes sense that they had their secret meeting place nearby. However, nobody knows if this theory is true. We also don't know when the cave was abandoned or what it was used for. Thanks for watching! Which of these mysterious places intrigues you the most? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you soon! Bye!